Hello everyone and welcome to our graduation webinar of this season. My name is Tvetelina and it is my pleasure today to host you to the Business International Relations and Computer Sciences webinar. Why last? Uh, today is uh, the last of 44 webinars within this semester. We have had a wonderful journey with our team. So it kind of feels like our prom today. So we're really happy to see you all here today. I will be moderating today's webinar with my colleague Pavel Tupalov who has been uh, at many of the webinars, so you probably know him already. And my colleague Anastasia will be talking to you in the chat where you can send us questions at any time. The universities that will introduce today uh, those subjects are Pace University with Rob Medrano and Bentley University with Lee Wan Lai. Before we proceed to today's webinar session where both universities will talk to you for about 15 minutes each, I would like to talk a little bit about the team of SRT that has been taking care of these webinars coming to you. We have had Anastasia, who is with you in the chat today, taking care of keeping everyone's questions, making sure that everyone's questions get to our presenters, talking to you before the webinars, and even presenting on some of them. You will be seeing more of her uh, in fall, where when we resume in September with more webinars. Uh, we have had Mitchell Perez from our Puebla office in Mexico, uh, reaching out to most of the Latin American schools and uh, being super active with you in the chat as well. Katerina Kirimicheva from our office in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria has been making sure that everyone signed up knows as much as you guys can for those webinars and she has also been talking to a lot of schools in Italy. So we have had a very great attendance across Europe, thanks to Katerina. And last but not least, we have had Krona Kane, who's Irish working in our uh, Sofia office, uh, making sure that all the universities are well prepped for the webinars. And uh, Krona has hosted some of the Irish, UK and US one. So I would like to say, say a special thank you to our wonderful team who has been with us in this season. As I said, it feels like a prom. So it is like the class of 2020. Um, those of you graduating this year, you have had a very challenging year. So we want to also congratulate you for being strong and uh, for thank you for being part of this journey with us for letting for letting us being uh, your partner in that uh, in that research process uh, we started in uh, in uh, two months ago on the 27th of April uh, without expecting really much and uh, we have ended up seeing 10,000 students parents and counselors so thank you all for trusting it it has been quite quite exciting doing that because the prom is nothing without teachers, uh, we, I would like to also thank all our teachers and counselors who have been supporting us from the very beginning, from all over the world. Just to mention a few names, and that's far from everyone. Special thanks to Carla Muniana, Veronica Chinosi, uh, Luke Turner, Claudia Samora, Valeska Perez, Maria Sawell, and Kevin Fuchs. You guys have been an amazing, support and you made us see you, you gave us a lot of advice and you made us see that what we do actually makes sense and your students appreciate that so uh really thanks for that i would like to invite if available uh kevin fuchs from peterson school in uh, mexico i see he's here actually today and he has been one of our uh, most frequent counselors joining the fairs uh, the, the virtual webinars kevin are you here I'm trying to allow Kevin's camera and microphone. I would really like to to say hello. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good morning. Great. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, Patricia, Kevin, you have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say, yes. First, say hello to your students who are this prom with us today. <laughs> Hi, Pato, what's up? <laughs> Sorry for kind of uh, surprising with that uh, welcome, but you have been really uh, participating in most of the webinars and I felt like we want to see oh, you at the wow. last one for this season because we'll be back in September. How are you in Mexico? You had a, quite a shaky week. Yeah, we had a shaky week, week literally, <laughs> but it's good <laughs> so far, like no, no aftershake, so it's been, been okay. Great. Oh, thank God. Because I think you were actually, you were, you were at a webinar while this happened. So you yeah, kind of exactly. had to jump out and eat. Yeah. So was that funny is that I was talking to Patricio, who's in this webinar too, and he was, he was also in the other webinar when it happened. So apparently he's also loyal, but a good job. 
Thank you. <laughs> Kevin has been almost at all, uh, all our webinars. The one you haven't been, you've seen the recording, hopefully. Totally. Uh, inviting a lot of students and counselors. So yeah, it feels like you're part of the team. And uh, I know that this webinar is quite special for you too, because you're actually quite connected with two of the subjects that we're covering today, uh, international relations and international politics. Totally. Is yeah. that right? What is your relation with them? Well, that's what I study. I studied international affairs and I'm actually right now I teach global politics. So I teach IB global politics and I am um, um, what well, I'm the counselor. Right. And it's super important, especially these days, you know, in, t in 2020, the world is very polarized and people look at uh, things from one side. And I think it's a really important course and it's really important for people to learn those skills. So I think this is a very important webinar. What would you tell to your students who want to study international relations? Be like me? Do it. <laughs> it's fun. And you can go anywhere, basically, study? right? Because like, yeah. you've lived in a lot of countries. Like, where did you study your degree? I studied in the United States. I li well, I lived in Belgium. I lived in the Netherlands. I uh, lived in Colombia and Mexico right now. So, yeah. I had some time in but Bulgaria. <laughs> I wonder where you went there. <laughs> Actually, Kevin is a very good friend of our team, so uh, he knows all, almost all of us. And uh, it's really, really nice seeing you again, Kevin. And uh, which one was your favorite webinar, if I may ask? Of course, today will be one of your favorite ones. But which one which was one... my favorite? Hmm. To be honest, I really like all of them. But I, I, for me, the one that I really liked was the community colleges because it was really new. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. That I think was last really week. Cool yeah. Great. And how about your students? Is there anything that you guys want to see different in September? Have you spoken with them already? Not yet, but I'm going to talk to Patricio because apparently he's been here a lot. So I'm, he's going to give me good feedback. He's very good. He's a good student. So Great. Well, Patricio, enjoy the webinar, you too. And uh, Kevin, thank you so much for your presence and loyalty. Thank you. And for uh, being part of this really new, exciting project for us. It's been it's been quite a journey. It was amazing. And, uh, it's quite Thank you. You did a good job. You all made it like that. That's what like, I think Thank this is the best thing. You really put like all these new universities in our perspectives, you know, so it's really important for us to see. So you guys did a really good job at giving all the information. We would love to keep doing that in person, of course. Uh, we've been we've been cut on traveling, obviously, as everyone else in March, but we've enjoyed that so much that even when we're back on the road, we keep doing that. So um, thank you for your support and making it feel so personal because it's so hard to actually feel personal when you're behind the screen, right? Totally. But you did well, a good well, job, really well done. done. Congratulations to thank everybody. You. Thank you. I would like to see if my colleague Pavel is here just to uh, okay. pass the floor to our presenters today. And I wish you a nice webinar. Thank you so and, much. And uh, see you see you around. Bye. Kevin. Bye. Hey. Hey, Pavel. Hello, everyone, and good morning or good afternoon for me as well. Uh, warm regards from our our office in Sofia, in Bulgaria. Uh, my name is Pavel Tupol. Thank you for the lovely introduction, uh, Tvetelina. Now it was nice uh, seeing Kevin one of our most uh, engaged attendees during all these uh, over 40 webinars. And uh, without further ado, let's jump on to uh, the presenters from today. We have uh, two great institutions from the United States of America. Uh, we have our speakers from Bentley University, Ms. Liwan Lau, and also uh, our presenter from uh, Pace University, Rob Medrama. I would like to ask them to jump in uh, if they can just say hi to the audience, and we'll proceed with a presentation of um, Pace University, which will be, uh, hello guys, hey. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Hi. Oh, the background changed on me, sorry guys, wow. I'm not in a desert, I'm actually at Bentley. Okay, that, that, was, that was a good one. Uh, <laughs> So uh, let me let me start uh, this lovely uh, presentation, this amazing webinar today, with a quick uh, uh, with a quick video that we'll see from the uh, from Pace University, and after that we'll continue with the presentation of Mr. Rob Medrano, who will give us more details about uh, about Pace, uh, about your study programs, and in particular he'll speak more about the topics that we have uh, 
we have today. After that, we'll continue with, uh, with a video and presentation from Bentley University. And during the entire session, you'll be able to ask your questions to our speakers, which will be answering live in the end of the session. On the right-hand side of your screens, you see where the chat panel is. So whenever you hear something interesting or something that you want to know more about, please feel free to share your questions. Now, let me share with you a lovely video uh, about Pace University. And afterwards, we'll have the presentation of Prop. Enjoy today's session. Pace is, exci Pace is excitement, leadership. My favorite thing about Pace is community. That it fosters a professional environment. The Fort Simons Honors College. The support it provides to succeed. Pace means discovery. The strive for student success. My favorite thing about Pace is the ability to be who you are. My favorite thing about Pace is its non-traditional campus. The amount of creative outlets it provides. My favorite thing about Pace is that we're in the greatest city in the world. Paces, opportunity, home, constant support, inclusivity, a place to find purpose. Pace means multiculture. Pace is expression. My favorite thing about Pace is the opportunity to make a difference. Pace means love is love is love. Pace is rewarding. Pace means finding yourself. Pace means acceptance. Welcome to Pace! Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon again. My name is Rob Medrano and I'm the Director of International Admission and Recruitment at Pace University uh, in New York City and for our uh, Westchester campus. So first and foremost, I'm very excited to be able to present uh, to everyone at this medium. Uh, at this point, uh, we've been uh, in working from home for the last three months. So I think I've become somewhat of a professional doing so many webinars uh, and eventually hopefully get to the point where we can go back to our normal and I can meet many students in person. But nonetheless, I'm really thankful for SRT to be able to provide this platform to be able to speak uh, to so many wonderful students and be able to convey uh, some of the things that Pace University has to offer. And I'm also glad to be able to share the platform with um, my colleague from Bentley uh, up in Massachusetts. So to give you some uh, context about Pace University, I always like to show pictures uh, before I get into uh, these presentations. And this is kind of our standard type of student uh, sitting on a laptop right by the by the water, uh, and it's right by the Brooklyn Bridge. So if you look at that bridge in the background, Pace University in the New York City campus is not too far from that. So this picture alone, it kind of sells itself in terms of students having the opportunity to be in the heart of the city, but at the same time be able to uh, step away for a little bit and get a breather and be able to do some work. The other things I know for many of our students who have interest in uh, interna international relations, uh, New York City is the home of the United Nations. So as you can see, you know, based on all the flags and whatnot, uh, the university is also not too far from there. It's just a couple of train stops away. Uh, so for many of our students that are involved in international relations, model UN and so forth, uh, they have the opportunity to be able to visit the United Nations and even partake in some possible internships uh, and maybe even OPT down the road. And then last but not least is Wall Street. Uh, so again, by the proximity for many individuals, because this presentation involves international relations, business, and computer science for Pace University, uh, being by Wall Street gives students who are interested in uh, the financial world, business world, marketing world, the advantage of being able to uh, have internships, networking opportunities, not too far uh, from Wall Street, some of the top uh, 500 uh, companies in the world, uh, you know, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs and so forth, but also uh, these companies as well hire students that are in arts and science that are also in computer science and so forth. And then being in New York City for our computer science, uh, the West Coast, which is kind of like in the California region, they have what they call Silicon Valley. New York City, we call it Silicon Alley. So you can see some of the major companies also located there. You can see it's Facebook, uh, Foursquare, Buzzfeed, uh, Spotify, Twitter, and so forth. So again, these opportunities for students that are, have an interest in computer science, uh, infrastructure, telemarketing, but also in terms of um, finance, business, and so forth in arts and science. Networking at Pace, 
uh, just to give you an idea, you know, and I think many students nowadays know the the opportunities that are available for students when they have internships and being in certain locations like New York City, like in Boston and so forth, is the opportunity to network, meet other individuals that um, can maybe assist you. You know, these are students that are meeting former alums uh, from the university, students that have moved up and maybe they're kind of doing OPT and now they can kind of pass that torch. 85% of positions that are filled are done through networking. Uh, so for our students, they're very savvy. They use our career services to find events. But nowadays, with so much technology, you can find so many different things that are going on in New York City uh, and to be able to uh, partake in that. And for, you know, for students, you know, one of the things that I always like to say for everyone is that, you know, if the student has the drive, we have the path for you. The university, you know, Pace University is, is a very diverse uh, school. Uh, we have over 2,500 international students, and that's ranging from 120 different countries. So we're a school of only 13,000 students. 2,500 of those are international students. So we understand uh, the needs of the international students, the desires of the international students, um, what an international student requires to be successful uh, because of how much we recruit and how well established we are in terms of the international landscape. Uh, students have the ability to um, have a very strong uh, return on investment. We rank in the top 12% uh, according to payscale.com in terms of uh, tuition investment. So just rest assured that your education at Pace is not going in vain. Uh, not only are you going to get a strong academic experience, great uh, experience in terms of social, but at the same time, you're also going to get something out of it uh, being at Pace. You know, students, they qualify for the Pace path. And that's for every student when they're coming in. They meet with an advisor. Uh, they're set up for success with career services. Within the advisor, they're going to set up their academic plan to ensure that they're taking the classes that they, that they need to take, uh, as well as to make sure that the academics are strong uh, and as well as set that up for later on when you're meeting with career services, uh, as well as for your internship. So everything ties along from day one, from when you first start, we're going to understand who you are, what your needs are, and then take you along the ride for the next four years. Academics, uh, we have over 100 different programs at Pace University, both between bachelor's programs and graduate. Uh, and we have different streams. So we have arts and science, uh, Lubin School of Business, which is the original school for Pace when it first was founded as an accounting school back in the early 1900s. Uh, health professions, uh, computer science school that was founded in 1983. Education, as well as law. And you know the average classroom size is very small. We usually try to keep it between 18 to 20 students. And once you start getting into your major, you're looking at a size of maybe between 12 to 15 students. So what does that do for you? It gives you opportunity to really understand you know, what's going on in the classroom. You're not going to be lost in a shuffle. Uh, there are many great universities that are very large and students do appreciate that. But we do also have students that want to kind of be more involved in a smaller scale. Uh, where the professor knows who you are, where you really get to understand who your classmate is, uh, where you're not so shy to maybe answer a question, uh, as well as nine out of every 10 professors have a PhD, which is pretty much the highest level of academics that someone can attain. So you're not learning from someone who is a graduate student, uh, but you're learning from someone who has the high level of academia, as well as an individual that does have also real world experience. So for our students who do have an interest in international relations, um, you know, that falls under our political science. And you can see pretty much what the what it entails. It's pretty much to develop critical insights and skills, uh, gives you an idea in terms of political theory. Uh, you'll develop critical um, contacts in terms of real world organizations. You can see that you can be part of the model UN team, uh, be part of C-SPAN course, New York City Council. Where, New, where the New York City campus is located is right across City Hall. Uh, which is pretty much where the mayor of New York City is conducting business. So many of our political science students are also across the street uh, working hand in hand with local officials there. So they really get a strong insight in terms of New York politics. Courses that you take in IR, you can see it's an intro, um, first century politics, political economy, uh, and those are different careers that are also listed. And I know this is being recorded and I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, at the same time, you can see that obviously United Nations diplomacy, uh, working in elected office, possibly legal profession, many students who um, take international relations do go on 
to uh, go to law school and then you know go on from there as well, uh, working in terms of journalism and so forth. So the, the opportunities in international relations are endless. Uh, and again, being in New York City does help in terms of for students to take advantage of that. Now for our students who have an interest in business, um, one of the longstanding programs of schools at the college is the Lubin School of Business. This is actually One Pace Plaza. So this is actually the front of the school. I have not seen this uh, campus since March. So it's actually when I look at this picture, it kind of reminds me of you know what the school looks like, but it's always great to see. That's inside we've renovated. So that's our Lubin School of Business Lounge. So students kind of hang out there, you know, talking business with other students, projects and so forth. This is where we're located. You can see this is New York City, the heart of it. Uh, right there in the bottom is Wall Street. So again, that's where pretty much all the top 500 companies in the world where New York Stock Exchange is listed. Uh, and the Lubin School of Business is right where you see it. So again, for students who have an interest in, work, in pursuing business, we're right in the thick of things uh, for students to be able to take advantage and be you know, involved with all uh, finance matters. Those are the programs that we offer. So we're a full standing business program. So we range anywhere from accounting, business administration, marketing management. Uh, you're looking at also arts and entertainment management, uh, finance and so forth. Uh, so again, students are able to take this, pursue their bachelor's, and then some students also then pursue um, a master's degree, an MBA and so forth. So they can also do that as well. Some students may want to combine uh, some business programs with STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, so these are programs that are designated as STEM programs within the business field. So you can see business analytics, which is also close to data analytics, but still with a little more of a finance component to it, uh, information systems, financial risk management, and so forth. So again, this is good actually for students who want to have a longer time of OPT in the United States. Uh, so if they pursue one of these programs, they are designated as a STEM field. What does making New York, you know, do for you? Uh, you know, part of the classes, you get to visit the Federal Reserve, uh, Stock Exchange. You can see that over 72,000 uh, alumni are from the Lubin School of Business. So again, when we go back to the very beginning of the slides discussing in terms of networking opportunities, to have the ability to network with over 72,000 alumni is a very big deal. Uh, many of our students do have uh, do attain opportunities within their internships and even OPT uh, down the road because of the networking opportunity. Uh, and we have almost close to 1,000 students um, in uh, the Lubin School of Business that are representing close to 80 nations. So again, I said 120 nations altogether, 80 of them are com coming into the business school. Internships that uh, students can do outside a classroom uh, as well, you know, that's part of life, you know, outside. It's not always just being inside learning financial accounting. You're also um, doing internships with top companies, faculty sponsored research, uh, dean's roundtables, which meets usually about once a month or quarterly sometimes in terms of being able to set, sit down with the dean of the business school and discuss uh, financial matters programs, things that are happening in the business world, uh, and as well as being able to do study abroad and field studies uh, within the business school. So, you know, for, for the Lubin School, global focus, we take you where you want to go. Uh, there's over 24 opportunities to travel and do international studies. We have a very strong student exchange program as well at Pace University. Uh, we've had over 40 uh, Fulbright uh, research students graduate and go on to pursue uh, master's programs, 46 to be exact. Um, and to kind of go over that, cover that, I know that we are international students, but sometimes it is an international student, we may not have been everywhere. So if you still have the opportunity to study abroad, even while at pace, I would still uh, take advantage of that. These are some of the fraternities uh, for business programs as well. I would definitely implore for every student uh, to be able to join one of the fraternities is good uh, to have on a CV uh, because fraternities are pretty much global. So you could be a fraternity at Pace and you can meet a fraternity brother or sister uh, from another school as well. And that's again, uh, enhancing your uh, visibility as well as again, expanding the networking opportunities that you do have. Uh, we are AACSB accredited. Uh, and you know that's pretty much of a high dis, uh, 
designation for a university. Only 5% of schools actually do have a dual accreditation with that. Um, and we do rank in one of the top 10% uh, top 10 schools, excuse me, in internship placement. So again, uh, to be able to have that background is something going back to the very beginning. I always go back to the very beginning of slides uh, in terms of uh, your return on investment, your tuition return on investment, all the things that we do here at the universities to make sure that you are gaining the skills to make sure that when you graduate, um, you have a strong name behind it, Pace University, which is highly recognized in the global workforce. Going on to our computer science program, uh, the school was founded in 1983. It's called the Seidenberg School of Computer Science. Um, you know, you receive a superior education with technology, internship, research opportunities. Uh, we also host hackathons and competitions as well. So for all our students who have an interest in any field of computer science, computer programming, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and so forth, this is the place to go. Uh, again, especially being where we're located in New York City, uh, so many of these top companies are uh, gradual, uh, excuse me, recruiting our students to be able to work uh, in their programs. Uh, we offer computer science, a BA or a BS, BS in information technology, and a BS in information systems. Uh, and within computer science, you're learning uh, programming codes like Java, CSS, Ruby on Rails, Python programming. Uh, and you start also learning a little bit of big data analytics, uh, which before you used to only learn that when you go on for a master's. But now we're starting to incorporate that on the bachelor's level because we realize that many of these companies that are hiring students straight in their four-year degree, they want students to have at least a background in some type of analytics. We heard the demand and we're supplying it. Some of the experiences for student, you know, we have women in tech, uh, we have organization cybersecurity, Pace Computer Society, and as well as artificial intelligence. I love to go to the Seidenberg School uh, because I see students sometimes with like these new virtual reality goggles and so forth. And I do know about virtual reality, but then when I see what they're doing, it's next level stuff. Uh, so it's always fun to see that students are given that empowerment uh, and the autonomy to be able to uh, do things on their own. Uh, as well as then have the guidance of their faculty member. So uh, we have special uh, collaborations with CBI in Switzerland, PDP in Finland, and PIP in Austria. Uh, so these are the global design factories. So these are students that have traveled overseas uh, to be able to, you know, they represent PACE in those respective countries. So again, going back in terms of being a global school, you know, representing over 120 nations, this doesn't happen pretty much overnight, but this happens over time and time in terms of our efforts to recruit. Uh, and because we're recruiting such a global population, we're able to go back out into the world, take these students to be able to compete on a global nature in many different parts of the world. Um, you know, data science and networking lab, you're learning cybersecurity, Cisco networking, uh, as well as big data. Big data, I mean, students that have strong interest in computer science, economics, mathematics, uh, all those individuals that have that kind of uh, interest in those streams, they should always take courses in uh, data analytics because it does entail uh, some type of mathematical background. You do have to have a pretty good sense of math to be able to study uh, big data, but that's pretty much one of the top programs and top um, uh, streams in terms of careers right now going on in the world. Occupation postings, uh, software development, you know, this, this is pretty much as of just a few months ago, so I'm sure that the numbers have maybe uh, increased in terms of demand, but we've you know gathered somewhere close to over 27,000 postings for software development, uh, over 9,000 postings in systems engineering, and close to a little over 5,500 in terms of IT managers. So again, for individuals that are looking for careers that have uh, high growth in terms of employability, you're looking at the, in the computer science industry right there. And specialized skills, Java, SQL, Python, as I mentioned before, software engineering, C++, uh, you can see growing skills, TensorFlow, Keras. I got to be honest, I sometimes look at this and I don't understand what I'm reading. I kind of have a little knowledge of it, but I'm sure that there are many students out there that have a computer science background or pretty much, you know, into computing so much that this is pretty much stuff that you know. And obviously with uh, programming and, and coding and so forth, that's something that every day it's fluid, it changes, it's dynamic. And that's one thing that's good with being where we are, 
our faculty members have a pulse in terms of what's happening in the world. So if we hear there's something new uh, that's kind of going in the pike, we try to incorporate that into the curriculum right away. So students, when they're graduating, they're learning exactly the skills that are needed for today, not skills that were needed yesterday. Popular job titles, I think many students know that, data analyst, application developer, uh, UI uh, developer, um, you know, business analysts, those are all pretty much top jobs. And, you know, in New York City alone, there's close to probably over 100, probably now close to 300,000 jo uh, jobs um, in that sector. I know many of our students always ask in terms of scholarships. Uh, over 70% of our international students do qualify for some type of scholarship. It's merit-based. Uh, just to be clear, students do not have to have the SAT exam, the SAT exam, to qualify for uh, a scholarship, nor do you need the exam to be admitted into the university. So it's optional, uh, and nonetheless, based on your merits, your grades in school, you will have the ability to qualify for some type of scholarship. Uh, the, per the merit uh, scholarship form is listed on the bottom of this slide, so you can always go into it and have an idea in terms of what you may qualify for. For those students who do take the SAT and do meet a certain threshold, uh, you may be able to be accepted into the Forsheimer Honors College. Uh, being accepted into the Honors College does have a little more cachet. You do qualify for some more scholarship opportunities, up to $28,000. Uh, you do have also a more rigorous academic schedule, so it's a little bit more on the challenge. Uh, and again, students that are coming from Forsheimers, usually they go on to become Fulbrights. So again, we've had uh, 47 since 2002. So we have two campuses, New York City, which is more the urban campus, which is where you pretty much see on TV with buildings, walking, uh, some reasons to choose it. Again, we're the home base for everything. We have the Metro pretty much everywhere. We're near Wall Street, Silicon Alley. We're also near some sporting events like the Madison Square Garden, where some of our sports teams play. Uh, but also we have events that go on there, networking events and so forth. It's very large. Uh, so for any individual that doesn't know, just type in Madison Square Garden. And the ability to network, uh, it's pretty much within arm's reach. The minute you walk outside the door, you're pretty much in arm's reach within so many things to be able to network. Safety and security, I know that's a big thing. Uh, just be re you know, rest assured, uh, that's one of our main priorities is to have the safety of each student. Uh, we have 24 hours, seven a day security on campus. Uh, students have the ability to receive text, phone, and email instantaneously if something does occur. Uh, because of the New York City location where it's located, again, as I mentioned, it's across City Hall. Uh, and also adjacent to that is one police plaza, which is the headquarters of New York Police Department. So again, in that area alone, there's a very high uh, exposure to law enforcement. Our Westchester campus, which is more the suburban campus, which is where uh, students may have more of the traditional mindset where it's kind of open space, trees, greenery. Uh, we do offer that experience as well. Sometimes some students may not want so much the hustle and bustle of being in the city. So they decide they want to go to our Westchester campus. Uh, it's a little newer, it's a little more state of the art. There's still plenty of internship opportunities available. Our neighbor next door in terms of the state is Connecticut. So there's uh, many financial companies, many top companies as well that are located there. Westchester also offers companies like PepsiCo, uh, MasterCard International. Uh, so students actually have the ability to go there. But even if you want to then be able to attain something overseas, you can, um, excuse me, not overseas, uh, in New York City, you do have the opportunity for that. We do offer shuttle vans that can take students from one campus to the other. Uh, and at the same time, we also have the Metro North Station, which is another type of train that can take students from our Pleasantville campus to New York City. So we like to say for students who go for Westchester, they do have the opportunity to have the best of both worlds, New York City and more of the suburban campus in Westchester. This is a picture kind of to give you a concept in terms of the open space. So it's very different from New York City where you see the tall buildings, Empire State Building, um, and a few of the other tall buildings. Here you have kind of like the smaller space spread out. Internships and careers. Many of our students always want to have an idea in terms of what's next. Yes, you've been putting in two, three years. What else can you do to enhance your CV? You know, the mission of career services is pretty much to help every student build their CV. And one of the things they do very well is that they sit down with the student, 
help them out with their CV, their resume, ensure that the words are not being repetitive, uh, really highlight the strength that you that you have, uh, all the things that you've participated in, any internships that you've had. Uh, and then once you have that job, uh, excuse me, that job interview or that internship up to, uh, interview, to give you an understanding of how to interview, right? It's easy to get an interview, but then once we sit down, we have to be able to convey um, the desire for the job, but not just to say, yes, I want this job, but also to have an understanding in terms of who the CEO is, what the product lines are, what the sales are, have an understanding of what the company does. So that way it shows that you have a vested interest. And this is something that career services helps with, with doing mock interviews and asking questions to be able to prepare you for that. These are just some of the titles, again, for internships, cloud engineer, data warehouse intern, front end developer, public relations intern, uh, web design intern. I can't list them all because that would then just take up almost a whole day. But these are just kind of an idea in terms of what we do in terms of setting students up for great internships. Places that have higher pace, you can see that there's some tech, Google and Microsoft. You can see that there's some finance with Ernst & Young and JP Morgan Chase. There's some political with the New York City Department of Education and Environmental Protection, some hospitality with Marriott. So we have a little bit of everything, uh, but even when you're looking at these companies, it doesn't mean it's just relegated to working in that company type of specific. Now, what I mean by that, if you're looking at Google, doesn't mean that you're just working as in computer science. You could work in finance. You could be working in arts and science, international relations, public relations. You can do that. Ernst & Young is known as a finance. Again, students could do computer science, coming from a hospitality background, arts and science. So many of these companies, they hire students that come from different backgrounds to fit different needs in their companies. This is just a sample of one of our students who's um, honors class of 2020. Uh, you know, he's in the Honors College. He worked in the Seidelberg Creative Labs. Uh, and he's a participant in Nexus Maximus participant. So that's Guillermo, he's actually from Spain. Uh, again, he's been able to take advantage of all the opportunities at pace. Make sure to join your clubs. As I mentioned before, it's not just about the fraternities, but also in terms of entrepreneurship lab, uh, we have clubs based on your uh, ethnicity, your background, your nationality, and so forth. So there's so many different clubs, over 100. Over 100. So again, expanding your network, these are individuals that four or five years down the road, maybe working somewhere, you network with them, you became friends with them, they can help you in terms of uh, finding a job, but also in terms of also just getting more out of your uh, educational experience, not just being in the classroom. Yes, academics is important, but we also want to ensure that you also have a fruitful experience outside of the classroom. And how do you do that? By joining some of the clubs. Um, for our students, you know, we also have our ISS office. Uh, they provide you pre-information in terms of arrival, uh, guidance and visas, employment uh, legalities, health insurance. That's the website right there. Uh, so they help students out with many of the um, I-20 questions. You can see it's pace.edu backslash ISS. Checklist, which is pretty much standard. Uh, application for admission, fee, transcripts, uh, English proficiency, uh, statement. You know, we always like to look at a personal statement that really tells us something about yourself. Just ensure that it's a personal statement that is tailored towards the university that you're applying to. Don't use the same type of essay for all places uh, because, you know, we as uh, admission professionals, we do realize uh, when things sound kind of the same. You want to really give an understanding of why do you want to come to said university because it has the program that you like and you know individuals have graduated and it's going to help you reach the next level to go back to your respective university and so forth. So just make sure that the personal statement, you don't take it lightly. It's very important to some universities when they're making a decision on the student based on in terms of what you're bringing to the table. I-20, these are the things that you do need. Uh, bank statements, letter from your bank official, um, and if you're being sponsored from your local government, make sure that you supply that. This is all information that's also located on our website. Submission for applications, we're listed on the Common App, uh, and as well as online, pace.edu backslash apply. And then this is our information. So for any individual that wants to email me directly, my email is on the bottom. It's rmedrano at pace.edu. 
And last but not least, um, you know, I always like to say to every student is just you are welcome here. So uh, we all come from different backgrounds and, you know, different nationalities and so forth. But it's good to be able to find a university that is accepting and welcoming uh, and also has a strong understanding of what the international student is about. So without much further ado, I know I've spoken a lot and I've given a lot of context about the university, but thank you so much uh, for hosting me and being able to speak to all the students. Uh, and without much further ado, I will pass it off to my colleague at Bentley. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. I'll be here to answer some of your questions. Thank you very much, Rob. It was a lovely and uh, informative presentation. Thank you for, for, for it. We have a lot of questions coming from uh, different students, uh, and we'll be asking all of them in the end of the session. So now I would like to uh, introduce you Bentley University and our speaker, Ms. Liuan Lau. But before that, we'll, short, uh, we'll see a short video from Bentley that I hope you all enjoy. You are welcome. You, you are welcome. 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 Bentley does a great job of preparing you because anywhere you go on campus, you're always meeting people from different backgrounds and you're gaining new friends from all around the world. Because the classes are so small, I feel like I can really get to know my professors on a one-on-one -on -one level. Teaching at Bentley is awesome. I'm always surrounded by smart and ambitious young people. We have students from all around the world and from all around the U.S. and we all come together and learn from one another to create a better business environment. When I visited Bentley for the first time, the people were so nice, I felt it was like my home away from home. I think what makes Bentley a welcoming experience for international students is knowing that they have tons of resources available on campus. Bentley gives you the space and flexibility to make this campus your home. Welcome to Bentley. <laughs> Welcome to Bentley. Welcome to Bentley. Welcome to Bentley. Bentley University welcomes you. Bentley Bentley welcomes you. You are welcome here. Bienvenido <laughs> Bentley. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Welcome to Bentley. Hi, good afternoon, folks. Um, oops, let me change my background. I don't know why it defaults me back to a, a desert in Arizona, but I am back at Bentley again. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. My name is Lee Huan Lai. I am the Associate Director of International Mission at Bentley University. And Rob, thank you for a fantastic, fantastic presentation. Um, I used to work and live in New York City, so some of the things that you've mentioned really touch my heart because I do miss New York. Um, but I am now back at my hometown in Boston, and I'm happy to share a very different perspective of what uh, how Bentley is different from some of the universities that you are learning about, and 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 Pace is a clear example. Um, so we are founded in 1917. We are a relatively new university. Um, we are located right outside of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. In terms of miles, it's nine miles. Uh, kilometers, it's about 14. Um, and as you have, if you have done a little bit of research, you know that Boston is a great city for college students. There are, it's called the college town because there are so many universities and colleges that are located in the Boston area. So just around Bentley University, there is Tufts, Brandeis, Babson, right? And a little bit further uh, south of us, there's Harvard, MIT, there's BU Northeastern. So it is really a great place to be a college student. So I wanna spend a little bit of time giving you um, a background about Bentley. I'm looking at the polls and it seems like most people are not familiar with us, which is fine. Um, and that's why I'm here. Uh, so as you can see, we are 
not a big research university like Pace. We are not a small liberal arts and sciences college. Um, we're also not a technical or vocational school. What we are is we've taken the blend of all those three things and created a business university. So we believe that uh, business is everywhere around us, right? Um, it's in your schools, you're looking at your phone, it's you're attending a event hosted by SRT, right? Um, schools are a business, uh, politics, you know, and how, how uh, business influences politics. It's all related in everything that we do. Um, there's really nothing that you look at in the world that is not related to business. So that's what we are. Uh, we are a business university. We're roughly 4,000 plus undergraduate students. Um, and we're very diverse um, in terms of given the size, right? Um, we have uh, 16, 17% international students coming from 100 countries. And um, they, they select us because of the size. They select us because of um, our reputation in business world. Um, and also, they select us because they feel welcomed and supported at Bentley University. Um, you'll see that uh, our class sizes are small. Uh, our faculty to student ratio is 1 to 11. What's not on this slide in terms of numbers is the fact that our largest class size is 35. So even in smaller universities, when you attend an introduction class, it could be 50 people, it could be 60, it could be 70. But at Bentley University, even in your introduction classes, like economics or introduction to business, none of your classes will be larger than 35. And I find that really, really impressive. Um, I want to mention that uh, we are ranked uh, well known in the area as uh, ranked number two in US News and World Report um, uh, in the region uh, for all the things that I've mentioned. Um, and what else is not on the slide is the fact after four years at Bentley, um, students or after their first year, uh, students continue to study at Bentley University. So in the United States, uh, many students transfer out of the first universities that they spent a year. The national average rate um, for retention to retaining a student at that university is about 75%. At Bentley, it's 92%. So every year, 92% of our students remain at Bentley because they find it you know, all the things that we talked about being challenging, being welcoming, because they really believe the opportunity um, that they can get and um, the, the return on investment at the end of four years is worth it. Great, so I wanna take a few minutes and talk about our approaches to academics. And I think that's what makes us really distinct, as I mentioned before, you know, our, Business is essential, and we really believe that through, and you can see that through our approach to academics. All students take a set, and there's different options, of business core classes, ranging from business statistics, right? Um, uh, introduction to marketing, finance, accounting, so that even though that you may have some idea of what these subjects are, but given you an introduction, classes will really help you enforce idea that, oh, that is what I want to study. I really want to study um, computer information studies, or I really, you know, taking a marketing class really helped me think about finance. So that's our general business core that all students take no matter what major. Another set of classes is the general education uh, classes. So remember in the beginning, I talked about how it's important that we blend not just uh, the business, but also the arts and sciences. So we still require students to take um, a composition class because we really believe that um, that will help you uh, with being articulate wherever you are in your internship, in your job, right? Some other core requirements are economics, micro and macro. Um, and then by the second year, students can choose their major. And listed here are our 25 
majors. Uh, on the left-hand side are business majors. On the right-hand side are arts and sciences. So we're not like PACE. We don't have 80 plus or I forget how many um, majors, but we have a very distinct set of uh, majors for students. And out of those, six are STEM uh, designated majors. And I think Rob talked a little bit about why that is significant for international students. Because after you graduate, you have a year for optional practical training where you join a company uh, with your student visa. The advantage of a STEM designated degree is that it gives you additional time where you can do an OPT for up to three years. So you can spend three years in a company in the United States kind of practicing what you've learned in your major, right? Um, uh, in addition to that, our students can do have 34 minors that they can choose from. Some students pick one or two. Um, and another option students have is a second major in our liberal studies major. So let's say you are um, very interested in sustainable science uh, or uh, that's you can combine that with um, marketing. Uh, let's say you are really interested in business, but at the end of four years and six years, you know you want to get into law. So our students would take a liberal studies major in American studies. Um, so there's a lot you know, of uh, uh, different kind of blends and combinations that you can have at Bentley University. Great, I'm gonna fast forward to the next slide. Oops, I think we accidentally skipped. So, that's our approach to academics, but in addition, hands-on learning is really important. So some examples are service learning, right, where you actually our students get uh, college credits because we really believe what you learn in the classroom can be applied in real world and you can get credits for that. Study abroad experiences, right? Um, but another really important aspect is our technology. We have seven high-tech laboratories and uh, I want to point out that our trading room is one of the largest trading rooms um, in any U.S. university with 24 Bloomberg terminals. And why is high-tech lab important? And not only will you have access to very expensive uh, state-of-the-art technology, but you actually learn to master it so that when you're in your internship, so that when you're actually at your job, you already know you already know how to use a Bloomberg terminal. You already know how to use, you know, an ASAP lab. Um, so, so that it gives you a leg up when you're doing an internship interview or actually a career job interview. So when you think about it, um, at the end of four years, what you know, talk, Rob talked a little bit about return on investment, right? And I think this slide really gives you an idea uh, about Bentley, what a Bentley diploma is going to give you. 92% um, of our students complete one internship, close to 70% complete two internships during the four years at Bentley. And I found it astounding that so many, 85% are paid internships, right? And they Many times I hear college students complain that their internships are not paid. Um, and, you know, I, I, I commend our students and our career services for doing an incredible job of matching our students to internships that are paid because is it important to have some money to pay for whatever that you need during your time in college? Um, and 45% of the internships result in a job offer. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that. So, again, um, at the end of four years, 98% of our students are in jobs at grad school. We are ranked really high by the um, Princeton Review for internship opportunities and our career services. And I cannot say enough about how amazing our career services are. Even your first year student, you take you have the option to take a class called CD Career Development 101. It's your second year, you can take a course in Career Development 201, 301, and 401. And all because we really believe that in your first year, what you need is different than your third year, right? In terms of career preparation. Um, and in addition, once you found that job, once you've, uh, you're you ready to go out in the real world, our career services also prepare you to become a young professional. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. So I wanna give you a set of idea of 
why we do the things that we do um, at Bentley. And one of the things is our career services. So, I, you know, we gave you the number that 98% of our students uh, are in jobs and graduate school, but we actually break it down and analyze by major. So as you can see here in our 2019 graduates, um, our class profile, you can see that you can see how many students graduated in that major. You can see their placement. You can see the compensation based on the major, but you can also learn about their path to employment, right? How did those students at Bentley get that job? Is it through the internship? Is it through networking? Is it through the career fairs that we organize twice a year with 100 plus employers that come and interview and, uh, um, and recruit Bentley students? Or is it personal networking? Uh, or is it family business? Because that is true for some students where their families have business and they want to further their education so that when they graduate, they go back to work for their families. Um, I know that our presentation here today is about um, uh, computer information systems. So I am giving you, um, sorry, let me, sorry, I'm having a little bit. There you go, let me close that. Um, so this is another example. Um, Bentley was founded as first as a county school. And as you can see, this is one of our most popular majors. Um, I wanna go ahead and talk about international affairs. Um, so what's different about international affairs at Bentley is that we really combine business. Um, and um, what I, um, it is a degree. Um, our coursework allows students to combine international relations, political science, geography, cultural studies, and we really emphasize hands-on learning, um, focusing on internships. Um, Rob talked about Model UN, right, service learning, um, but also all of our students in the international affairs major complete uh, a semester abroad or a faculty-led international course. Um, so one of the examples is um, our global commerce and human rights class. Um, and in that class, they focus on Chile and it was a test case for global commerce and a free market economy, economy right? But they also talked about, uh, evaluated what are the benefits and the opportunities available to the people, to the Chileans who live in a nation now who's, um, who has opened up um, uh, and embraced a liberal marketplace and free trade. But at the same time, what does it mean? What are some of the hardships that Chilean people have to deal with because of some of the changes because as a result of these unrestricted free trade, right? Um, so it's a faculty-led program. Uh, they spent 10 days um, um, in Santiago and different cities talking to uh, business uh, commerce, but also talking to human rights uh, organizations. So that's a little bit about our international affairs. Um, and next is computer information systems. So Bentley does not have a computer science uh, program and it is computer science and computer information systems are very different. Computer science is focused on a very technical detail about uh, learning languages, how to code, uh, program, develop apps, right? Um, Computer information systems um, is we, at Bentley, we integrate a strong business foundation. We also make sure that our students have key managerial skills um, and specialize in emergency competencies. And we have a learning um, and technology computer information system sandbox, right? The high tech lab that we talked about so that students can build cool stuff um, with cool technology. Um, and what I think is different is that when our students graduate, uh, they work in industries um, and as business analysts, system analysts, um, application developer, end user support specialist, and more. And on the right hand side, you'll see that, um, so this is a relatively newer major at Bentley, um, but um, as you can see, the compensation is uh, one of the higher ones. Uh, the median salary is about close to 70,000, whereas for the all across uh, the university, it's about $60,000 per year. Um, and again, you know, the path to employment, how did these students who study computer information studies, what kind of job, like how did they get their jobs? Um, and we are very transparent with our students um, with that information. 
Great. I think I've talked a lot. I'm, I will just um, uh, summarize with a little bit about um, here's a picture of Bentley campus. And um, I know it's coronavirus time and this actually doesn't exist right now, but it did at, at Bentley, uh, you know, six months ago. Um, but these are some of the things that our students enjoy among 100 plus clubs and organizations um, and uh, being a varsity sports school, all of that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our application process. We are common application. Um, we spend, we have three people that read your entire application uh, because we're really holistic. We're not just looking um, at your test scores, even though students are applying next year, it is optional for you to send um, your SAT or SAT, uh, ACT. Um, so we look very closely at what what are the some of the classes that you've taken? Um, are you an IB diploma student? Or what are the A levels that you've taken? Um, we we require students to have minimum of pre-calculus. Um, more competitive students have calculus. Um, and uh, we review your, your letters or recommendation and kind of evaluate what kind of student you are and make sure that you're a good fit for a Bentley University. In terms of merit scholarships, um, we have a wide range from $10,000 uh, up to close to full tuition. Um, and these are merit scholarships, which means students don't need to uh, uh, apply on a separate application. Uh, all students will be reviewed for them. Um, if there are any uh, female or woman, woman students audiences, uh, we have a woman leadership program is, that has an application process. And if selected, uh, these uh, cohort of women students are given uh, extra opportunities, programming opportunities, but also an additional $10,000 per year of merit scholarships. Um, so I hope to I answer some, give you a perspective of what Bentley is about. Um, you can see on the screen that you can connect with our student ambassadors and learn about their experiences. I am just um, a staff member, right? I'm sure you want to hear from students and uh, learn about their experiences. And my email is there. Um, so thank you so much for uh, spending 15 minutes with me. It's part of my third team. Thank you very much Juan, for your for your presentation. Um, we we have a couple of questions that uh, I want to answer uh, to ask you and Rob. So I I will guys uh, expect your answer because we received a lot of different uh, questions regarding the application process. Some of the topics that you already covered in your presentation. But I'll be glad we we just repeat some of uh, some of them because. Uh, it will be better uh, for the students and for all our uh, viewers today to, to understand better how to, to apply or what are the requirements. Uh, because uh, during your presentation, Rob, you said a couple of times uh, and you, you talk a lot about the model of the United Nations. Uh, one of the students is asking if, um, if he's not into international relations uh, but in business, can he or she still join the MUN? Uh, I will answer this question saying absolutely yes. Uh, in the States uh, and most of the international universities in the world, you can pretty much do whatever you want as extracurricular activities. And it's actually a matter of uh, your uh, time availability to be part of these different projects. But uh, talking about MUN and um, about the, the United Nations, uh, what are the, can you both tell and repeat us just again, what are the admission requirements for the IP diploma for the holders. Um, Rob, do you have any advantages for people who are graduating with an IP diploma, like uh, credit transfer or maybe a special scholarship available for them? And after you answer this question, uh, the floor will be given to Yuan. You know what? I mean, I can answer the question, but why don't we have ladies first since I started the presentation and I'll let Ben Lee, you know. You know was, okay. Was so I felt bad, a little bad. So if anything, you know, maybe we can start out and answer. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be consistent, but you know. <laughs> okay. You're such a gentleman, Rob. I miss the you. Support of education. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, for those who don't know, Rob and I crossed paths uh, before, and uh, I, Rob uh, went to a school that I used to work at called Fordham University. Um, so uh, IB students um, who take IB exam higher level and receive five, six, and seven will be counted towards college credits at Bentley University. So what that means is you may be able to skip uh, an introduction class. Um, you may be able to uh, graduate early. Um, you may be able to do more in terms of combining majors. Um, and um, um, in terms of evaluating IB uh, diploma students, we also take a look at what are your IB higher level courses? Is it more science and math heavy? Is it more humanities and arts heavy? Um, so you know, we, we have a matrix where we kind of take a look at that, but um, we we definitely, being a business university, want to make sure that students have uh, the math um, the math background. Okay, um, and just to, to elaborate a bit more on the question, uh, can, can a student transfer, uh, let's say, coursework completed under the Ivy Diploma uh, to his or her uh, first year of studies at Bentley? Yeah, so I think generally U.S. universities will say, okay, did you take any uh, IB higher level courses? Did you take any A-level courses or AP class exams, right? And each university evaluate uh, that exam result slightly differently. Um, so at Bentley, if you receive five, six, and seven, you will be able to get credits, which means you can transfer those those knowledge that you've learned um, to 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 Bentley and um, even as a first year student. So there's no, you don't have to do that your second year, but you do that mostly in your first year. So then we can evaluate to say, let's say you did your IB uh, higher level in math. You probably don't need to take a calculus class your first year. So, you know, we'll skip that class and make sure you have more opportunities to take more advanced level, either math courses or business or anything in your major or other electives. Okay, great. And for, for PACE, it's pretty much similar in terms of um, we do accept uh, all levels in terms of whether it's IB or AP and so forth. Our, uh, our requirements just a tad less, so I'm sorry, uh, but we, we, we do require just a four, not a five. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, the higher levels. So for any individual that um, does have those scores, they do have a, a, a chance. Uh, for those credits to be able to apply towards uh, their degree, but it would be the same thing if they have a high level in math, they they wouldn't have to take like a requirement like a calculus or something to that effect. Okay, that's great. Um, because it's it's an important question. I know that uh, for both of you, it's uh, it's going to be uh, something that you don't find as very important. But some students are not very well aware what exactly is merit. So do you, do you mind both of you telling uh, to, to the audience how would a merit uh, be, be determined? Because the question that I see here is, um, is the merit given for people who have high yeah, grades? Yeah, we're going around at the same time, going behind. It's great. <laughs> Got a lot. Uh, so is, is merit uh, considered for someone who is a founder of X number of companies or someone who speaks four languages or someone who has been uh, very proactive in model of the United Nations? Do you want? Yeah, great question. Um, and every university, I would say, evaluate that differently. And at Bentley, um, we take a look at um, mostly your academics. So um, are you getting um, A's and B's? Are you taking rigorous classes? But at the same time, you, you know, we also evaluate, are you a leader um, in, in any clubs and organizations? Um, do your teachers support that you are in fact a great student, right? So we wanna make sure that uh, your application is consistent. So to, to put it in a, it's, so, so it's mainly an academic merit scholarship with some components of leadership being evaluated. Yeah, for, I know that I, I did see um, when Laura was talking, so I saw some of the chat questions. So, uh, you know, with merit for us, and I think it was also uh, in 
terms of merit with scholarship. I mean, it's based on the academics. So, you know, depending on their GPA grade percentage, whether if it's on a 4.0 scale, 5.0 scale, or on a 100% scale, we evaluate that. And that's to determine in terms of uh, scholarship ability. Um, now, in terms of uh, admission, then it's a bit different. We do la look at the academics, but at the same time, then we also look at their merits in terms of what they've done for extracurricular, you know, what they've done if they play on sports, if they've done any events, if they do, you know, if they started up a startup lab in their garage or in their backyard or something like that. So those are all things we do look at. But uh, when I was alluding to merit, I apologize. It was more in terms of uh, qualifying for like uh, scholarship opportunities oh. for like basic academics. Yeah, great. Um, another question, uh, well, for, for, forgive me, both of you, if I were not able to, uh, if you covered this already in your presentation, but uh, can you please repeat for our audience uh, if the students can apply in spring or how many intakes you have per year? Yeah, great question. We have two intakes. Um, and that's uh, fall, or generally known as August, September, and then spring, which is uh, around January. Okay, and what are the deadlines for applying for fall and spring when a student can apply or should? <laughs> Great question. Um, so students applying to fall, there are multiple deadlines and type of applications. Um, I am not sure if students are aware that uh, what the difference is are between early decision, early action, and regular decision. So these are some of the terms that have been thrown out in, in the application cycle, which means, um, so at Bentley, we have early decision, which is if you apply to Bentley, uh, because you learn everything about it and you think this is the right university for you, you apply to one early decision university. And if you get in, then you attend that university. Early action is you apply to a few universities that you really want to make sure that you have some universities and that you get in, right? So you apply early action to a few universities. You apply, you get in, if you get in, and you have time to decide. You typically about six months to decide if you want to join that university, right? And regular decision is basically sort of the last deadline that you can apply to that university or college. So at Bentley, we have early decision, which is generally due in November, um, early decision two, um, due in January, and also regular decision in, in January, January 15th. Well, and how is decision based? Similar. I mean, I, th I think for the most part, almost every major university offers early action, early decision. You now, some of the dates sometimes change, but for the most part, I think it's safe to say that November 1st is usually the early action. Um, and then some schools change their early decisions or they may have like a early decision too and, and so forth. So that could change. Now, um, in regards for us, we do, we do have certain programs that do also offer rolling admission. Uh, and we do have some programs that have hard decisions. So especially if, uh, we also offer performing arts uh, and within performing arts, it's like kind of theater and um, a few other different programs within that. So those have harder deadlines. What I would recommend from, from almost every student as they're looking into you know the universities, specifically, hopefully Bentley and Pace, um, is really to look on our websites because those things sometimes change dynamically for whatever reason. So usually every page, um, excuse me, every website will have uh, frequently asked questions or deadlines and you can read pretty much all the deadlines for general programs and a specific program because again, some programs are a little more selective. So then they do want a uh, earlier uh, deadline to be able to make decisions for students. Can I can I add something on, on your comment, Rob? Actually, uh, not only you can go on the website and check for the information, but you can reach out directly to uh, our presenters today. In an email, you receive their contact details, so you can uh, easily reach out to them via email and ask all your questions that, uh, that you might have uh, after this presentation or on a later stage. Uh, Liwan, I want, to, uh, I want to ask a question uh, asked by Areta, it's uh, regarding uh, the possible, I mean, first of all, what is the difference between economics, finance, and just finance? 
in terms of majors and also uh, what are the opportunities for uh, combining one of them with sustainable sciences for example yeah great question um, economics is sort of looking at theory right um, of how markets work uh, and finance is more about if you look at the the numbers of uh, not of how company like stocks like that's an easy way to look at it right um, so and economics is part of actually an arts and sciences degree or a liberal arts and sciences degree whereas finance is considered a business degree so that gives you a perspective in terms of you know business is much more hands-on practical you learn and do um, economics is much more about you know looking at the economies uh, of let's say united states right looking at gdp looking at how uh, trade works um, so very different they're different and interrelated it's more like I'm going to study the economies and, and then in finance, I'm actually going to do it in my job. Um, and our major economics finance is actually a newer major um, proposed by our students because they really find that being able to learn a the theory and apply it is important to, to them and the industry that they're about to do. Um, okay. some, some sound came. Uh, sorry. So thank you very much for this uh, for this question uh, for this answer, Luan, and also thanks uh, Aretha for asking it because the the thing the, the opportunity to combine majors and minors is a very uh, very important and very valuable part of the the student time at the university. So if uh, any of you is thinking about uh, combining majors and or minors, please do it. I mean, this is the best way to, to take the most out of your three or four years at college, at university, and actually be someone who is much more valuable afterwards on the, on the labor market. Um, Maria Teresa is asking a question about um, the international relations. Um, Rob, do you mind answering uh, the, the, the question? Are there any specific skills someone should have uh, if he or she wants to study international relations? from your perspective and your experience? Well, I think for international relations, it's it, it does involve a special person, right? Someone that has a global perspective, someone that's open, um, someone that's accepting, right? Because if you're dealing with international relations, you're working with different demographics, different individuals, um, you have to have tolerance. I mean, these are all personal skills before even getting into the academic skills. Um, and obviously, I think for for someone who's going into international relations, they should focus a lot in terms of also writing ability and working on presentation skills. And I think um, you know some of that comes from you know you have people that are shy at first, but maybe getting involved with clubs, events, uh, being able to participate in a classroom, uh, your internship, everything that's going to give you the exposure and in, in the in the practice to get you to that level. I don't think where everyone is born an orator. I mean, some people are born politicians, I guess you can say, but there are also people who kind of grow into it. Um, and you have to have a passion for it. I mean, obviously this is that's a labor for love. I don't think international relations is the, the program where someone really is going to get in for the money. Uh, I think it's really for someone that really wants to make a difference and be able to, um, have also a saleability, right? Being able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations in a meaningful manner, uh, not having a temper, you know, all those skills I guess you need to have because if you're working on a global scale, you can't be in the United Nations and uh, losing your temper. That's how uh, things flare up, I guess you can say. That, that's absolutely true. Um, because we are getting towards the end of our session. There are a couple more questions that we might not be able to answer because they're just a bit uh, specific. Uh, I would like to, to thank everyone who, who was uh, with us today. And because this particular uh, topic of the presentation is related to, to my university studies, I graduated with international relations. And I can tell everyone that this is really uh, a major that opens your eyes and give you, uh, gives you the chance to, to really have uh, 
higher and broader perspective of the world, not only in terms of the, the countries around the globe, but also uh, in terms of people, cu cultures, uh, and everything. I would like to thank everybody from Spain, Qatar, Romania, Kuwait, Albania, Spain, and so many different people, and also to, to Rob and, and, uh, and Yuan, it was a pleasure being with you guys. I will now give, give the floor to my colleague, Katerina, and uh, she will give you, she will say a couple more words. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you both so much. Um, Lee Wan, I did perform the palms, but uh, we enjoyed seeing you at Bentley uh, virtually and hopefully soon in person. And Rob, really uh, interactive presentation. So thanks a lot for that. I felt like I was traveling again to my favorite New York City. I hope I can do that soon. So thank you again <laughs> for being with us last webinar um, and thanks everyone for spending the last two months uh, traveling with us virtually uh, with this this is a wrap from SRT webinar series for this semester I wish everyone a wonderful summer uh, stay safe of course and uh, we look forward to seeing you at more webinars in September one more time I would like to um, see my wonderful colleagues from all over the world who have worked with us on those webinars involved in that new project so um, thank you so much guys Blagudaria, spasiba gracias and I love you very much have a great summer and thank you Rob and Liwan for your time today thank you we want to see you soon take care yeah you good to you Rob be safe ciao bye Being in New York City area, there's just so many opportunities. We have advertising firms in the city, the big four and different accounting firms, and we also have great financial institutions. It's a great opportunity being here. Being able to access everything Westchester has to offer, as well as New York City, has given me a leg up in my field. The student body in Pleasantville is definitely a large community. All my professors and advisors really supported me as far as just enhancing what I could do with myself after four years here. We have great resources, not just with the professors, but at the tutoring center, at the writing center. It's really nice to have a small community where they're kind of individualizing your path into your best option for success after PACE. Pace graduates definitely have a little bit of a head up in the field when we graduate. I don't think I would have had research experience as a freshman at any other university. The Pre-Professional Medical Society traveled to Peru, where eight of us volunteered with the Foundation for International Medicinal Relief of Children. I was selected to go to Helsinki to work on the product development project. Being able to work on a real world project abroad was really the starting point for my career. PACE has definitely helped me become the best version of myself by offering so many leisure roles. I'm in Alana, which is a first year mentorship program that PACE provides. I was given the opportunity to help create the Nursing Student Association here at PACE University. I'm involved in the Lean In Circle chapter in New York City. Being able to mentor these students, it really brings light to me. You feel like you're able to bring enthusiasm to the workforce, to bring it into the classroom. My biggest thing is just helping out my community because I really do care about PACE University as my home, that's my second home. I can help them with whatever it is that they're doing and helping them make their own PACE path. The PACE path can provide you 